Hi, my name is Julian Adams and welcome to Simplified Safety. Today, we're gonna to talk about OSHA's guardrail requirements. Now, when I say guardrail, I don't mean the highway barriers you'll see that protect opposing lanes of traffic. I'm talking about the barrier that you would use for fall protection. We're going to talk about the federal OSHA standards for general industry. If you're in the construction industry, maritime or agricultural industries, or if your state has a local code like California, then you'll want to make sure that you double check those because there may be some differences. The first thing that we're going to go over is when guardrail is actually required. In general industry, OSHA says that if you're working on a level that is four feet or more above another level, then you're at risk of a fall injury and you need some form of fall protection. That fall protection can be a guardrail, it can be a personal fall protection system, or it can be a safety netting system. In this video, we are just going to focus in on what the guardrail requirements are. If you want more information about what height fall protection is required, we do have another video that goes into more detail. So please check that out. Now let's talk about your guardrail dimensions. Your top rail needs to be at least 42 inches above your walking working surface, plus or minus three inches. So that gives you a range of 39 to 45 inches in height. If you don't have a small structural wall or a parapet that's at least 21 inches next to your guardrail, then you need to have a mid rail. That mid rail needs to be midway between the top rail and the walking working surface. Typically that's 21 inches. Your top rail and your mid rail need to be at least a quarter inch thick or a quarter inch in diameter. Nowhere in your guardrail shall a sphere of 19 inches be able to pass through between your top rail and the walking working surface. This is really important as you think about the thickness of your mid rail. Say you're using steel cabling and it's only a quarter inch thick. You may need to use multiple mid rails in order to account for the 19 inch sphere rule. The last dimension that we're going to talk about is your post spacing. OSHA doesn't define what your post spacing needs to be in general industry. However, that is going to be determined by your engineer or the manufacturer of the guardrail that you're using. There are a number of factors that could affect that, like the material that you're using or the wind conditions for your location. Here are a few more details to note about your guardrail. You cannot use steel banding or plastic banding as material for your guardrail. Your guardrail needs to be smooth surface to prevent any injury to the user, like a laceration or snagging of clothing. Your top and your mid rails cannot extend past your terminating posts in such a way that it creates a puncture hazard. One of the ways that you can avoid this is just by creating a de-return so that the top rail and the mid rail just loop in back on themselves or just end the top and mid rail right at the terminating post. If at any point tools, material, or debris can fall off the walking working surface onto a person below or into dangerous equipment below, then you need tow board. Tow board needs to be a three and a half inch tall barrier at the bottom of your guardrail, and there cannot be more than a quarter inch gap between the tow board and the walking working surface. And the last thing we're gonna talk about are the load requirements. Your top rail needs to be able to withstand a concentrated load of 200 pounds. Your mid rail needs to be able to withstand a concentrated load of 150 pounds. And your tow board needs to be able to withstand a concentrated load of 50 pounds. All of this is in the downward and outward directions. When you apply this load to the top rail in the downward direction, it's important to know that it cannot deflect below a height of 39 inches. This is important if your top rail already starts off at the 39 inch height because any deflection, even a quarter inch, would mean that that guardrail is no longer an OSHA compliant guardrail. And these are the basics for your general industry federal OSHA guardrail requirements. There are other things you may need to consider like local code, ADA, or anything specific to the work that you're doing. So make sure to check those out before you install your guardrail. My name is Julian Adams. Thank you for watching and have a safe day.